In this video, I want to talk about dreams that should help warn the church and help guide them. As um, God brings his uh, judgment on the earth, um, it's his um, will and desire to bring the church in position to be a light bearer um, and to, to help um, others. The problem is, is when the church compromises and fails to do the things the church needs to do, it forces God to shake things up and to get the church um, in line. And so throughout scripture, he's always trying to get his people in line with him and he, he will warn them over and over again. And we see that not just um, throughout the entire you know, prof prophets in the Old Testament over and over again. We also see that even in the New Testament, um, uh, such as um, in Revelation, um, when he talks to the churches in Revelation 2 and 3. And uh, as far as um, scripture goes, that will bring some reference to the things I'm talking about. Um, Psalms 91. Um, is famous um, for um, getting God's protection. Um, but it's something really important. It says that we need to rest in the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, we don't do what he, we want to do and then expect Him to follow us and protect us. We need to do what He wants us to do. Another reference is Isaiah 42. Um, it, it talks about in Isaiah 42, um, at the very beginning, it, it describes almost um, Jesus coming as the Lamb. And um, very kind and and um, he doesn't cry out. He doesn't, you know, um, lift up his voice. Um, but he does expect his people to do that, see it, but in a different fashion. So at the very end of the day, see, he comes as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And um, so you can read about that, about um, the different characteristics of, of Jesus um, at the end. Um, and the problem that is he brings to the attention in that, that scripture is they were not obedient um, to, walk, to walk in his path or to follow his law. And why is that? Well, for one thing is we've been taught not to. Um, and in Second Chronicles, it says, my people perish for lack of knowledge um, because they have forsaken the law of our God. He will forsake us from being his people. So again, there's that word law again. So in these dreams, um, I want to um, um, bring some attention to um, um, some of the things that, um, the dreams I've had that should help uh, give you understanding for guidance and protection in the last days. So I'm gonna share a dream, um, three bears and a hiding place. I had it in 2009. Um, there were three bears and they were all chained up. Um, one bear was fairly aggressive, but because he was chained up, it wasn't really that scary. It wasn't that big of a deal. The other bear was completely quiet and, and calm and, and um, kind. And then the other bear was ferocious and wild, and it was so wild it broke the chain, and it came after people, and it, you, you, you knew it. He was just going to demolish everybody. And, um, and I was there, scared, of course, and then all of a sudden I got taken up to um, um, this uh, little home refuge place, and there was a young lady there. She was, um, she wasn't old, she wasn't young, she was maybe late teens, early 20s. So the interpretation of this dream is Bill Clinton, he was the uh, first bear, and although he was um, a little bit communistic in his approach, um, and the bear represents communism, he was a bit communistic in his approach, um, he was restrained by the Constitution. The second bear is George Bush, and I want to point out that I know that a lot of people have thoughts of, of him being um, a puppet, him being... Um, a communist part of the whole agenda and things like that and did things he wasn't supposed to do but um, um, there's more to the story than obviously what gets out there in the media and even more than what he shared and um, I share those in my dreams on my website that talk about George Bush so I encourage you to go there um, and then the third bear is Ob Obama and just as anybody who's really paying attention and going beyond the mainstream media knows um, he is uh, out of, he, he, he doesn't care about our Constitution. He's, he's just completely out of line. And um, 
and um, ferocious and completely, um, you know, his friends are communist. Uh, if you want to look some of that stuff up, if you don't know that, it's really easy to find because it's all out there. So when he gets, when this comes upon us, God has a place of protection. And in that place of protection is the, 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 the girl there represents the church. The woman represents the church. Um, if you have a dream of an old lady that represents the church, a lot of times that's somebody that maybe um, um, isn't a good, good thing. They, it's not, not a good thing. Um, and then the baby is kind of a youthful, could be the youthful church. And then, um, and then the, uh, the young lady, at least this is my impression. I, I, there's probably all kinds of interpretations, but in some of my dreams, anyway, the, um, the young lady, more like it, more of the innocent church, still willing to learn. And so I'm gonna say some things that um, might um, seem a little different um, through the dreams and it's things that I've learned. So, um, again, later on in that year, another dream, the, the dream is called In Camp Over Guns. Um, I was in that same area, the two different dreams, but the same type of area. But instead of being in that place of protection, um, in, in the, uh, the home with the young lady, I was inside a camp. And there were, the thing that was strange is, some of the people guarding the camps were like young kids, like 14 years old, and they had a gun. And I went, went to one of the boys and I said, why, you know, that's our Second Amendment right. And he was just, he was young, scared, and confused. And it's interesting because since then we see the um, civilian security force um, that Obama have, has made up. We don't hear much about it, but it is out there. And I've had dreams of these young kids that are actually coming against the citizens um, with military people um, as their head. And, and then other, other people, just kind of a smorgasbord of people coming in to um, take out the Patriots. So um, it's not enough to be a Patriot. Um, it's good to be, it's good to love the nation God gave you and, and that, but um, the main issue here is to be where God wants us. When God's judging our nation, He has a different place for us. It's not to be involved in a civil war. The next one is a pa passionate over reconciliation, and it's about a Jew and a Gentile and they're married and they, they um, are separated and how God wants to bring that separation back together. And um, when Jesus was at the Garden of Gethsemane, there were, there were, um, he was praying that his people would become one, that there wouldn't be a division. And I'm summarizing, but basically he wants unity, not just among you know, the Christian brothers, um, but I think there's a unity that he wants to, um, us to love the Jewish people and so they'll listen to us, or, you know, so we can bring the gospel to them. But you see, they have a lot of information, historical stuff. Um, the, um, there's even a reference that Paul says that um, the, um, um, I can't think of the word, the oracles of God were entrusted to the Jews. They weren't entrusted to the Christians, apparently, because they would have said that. They're entrusted to the Jews. They have some things that, that they've been entrusted to, and it's all about... Um, us getting in line with God and that's what he's warning us to do. That's what he wants. In the other dream, the same couple um, is involved, but the, the husband wasn't there, the Jew wasn't there. But the Gentile was, and I go to the door to talk to her about this, this message, and she's completely asleep. And her offspring, meaning the church, um, the, the people in the church, were just jumping on the furniture, and they um, didn't have any care you know, in the world about really what 
they should be doing because they already had, you know, they, 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 they had it in mind, this is what they were going to do. And um, a lot of us have noticed that there's a lot of things going on and um, God's trying to sound the warning bell to the church to, to wake up and to, to see what's going on. This next dream is called All Fruit Jelly or Persecution. This is when I really want you to understand. This one really, really upset me and really got me to understand. You see, I've gone to church since I was a little girl and there's a lot of wonderful people in the church. And when God was showing me some of these dreams of persecution coming in the church and that he had a problem with some of the things that were, was going on in the church, I was really confused because some of these people were the nicest people. They had all the fruit. So I asked God, I said, they have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, you know, I went through the fruits of the Spirit. I couldn't find one that they didn't have, so I was confused. And so I had this dream, and in this dream, you know, there was this, uh, I was in my kitchen, and there was a small jelly jar, it's all fruit, and I buy it sometimes, it's pretty expensive just to get a small little jar. And then there was a big, huge jar of regular jelly that you'd get a lot cheaper than this small little jar. And so what's happened is, there's been a, a compromise to have a larger church. There's been a lot of compromise thrown in, and that's not God, that's, um, that's sin. That's traditions of man, that's not from God. But this small little fruit jelly, you know, that's what he wants, he wants the purity of it. It's better for our bodies to have pure jelly and to leave the sugar and preservatives out. So here's what happened. So. In one scene, he's showing me this, these jelly jars, and then he takes me to this place like it, it's like I was in Greece. And it was really strange because I woke up and I thought, wow, I just visited Greece, or that, that area, I think it was Greece. And there was those old ancient stages where they used to do, they used to do um, uh, plays and things like that. Well, and they also used to persecute people there and, um, and, and, um, people who were charged with something that did something wrong. And so, um, there, all of a sudden I saw this, I was standing on the top overlooking, and I saw this like Greek Roman god. I wasn't sure. Um, I think now um, his name is Plato. And there's different things that, 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 that this guy has, this, this Greek god has done, Roman Greek god has done. Um, I hope I'm saying it right. Anyhow, the there has just had just been Christian persecution, and it, even though I didn't witness it, it was completely bloody. It was completely um, horrible. What I knew had just taken place there. And then this this um, Greek god, he took a there was a just happened to be a sink there, you know, a, a modern day 21st century sink, and he washed his hands, and all the blood washed, and his hands were completely clean. And what God was saying was that when persecution comes. It's going to be because um, the, you know, we sinned, and he allowed the enemy. The enemy is going to be completely outright, really, because we broke God's laws, and so God has is sending them for t to have us pay for breaking those those rules and the things that God wants. It's all about a purified church. It's all about purifying the the body of Christ. After this dream about the all fruit jelly and the persecution, um, it really bothered me because when I would try to share these type of messages with other people, which there weren't too many, uh, there was a lot of confusion and um, scriptures of Paul were always repeated back to me, which um, as I have mentioned before, I have been going to church since I was a little girl, so I know plenty about Paul and I know um, a lot of things from the other scripture too. So. Um, everything Paul said is right, but there's other scriptures to kind of weave in what he was saying. Peter talks about it real well when he said that um, at the end of, I think, Second Peter, that Paul says some things that are hard to understand, that we need to make sure we're balanced. What does it mean to be balanced? It means you know all the scripture, don't you just need, don't, if all you do is you study Paul, you're probably going to get a little confused. He was 
he was bringing new revelation based on the other scripture that he already studied, that people already knew. And so he was bringing more. He was talking about the things of the Spirit. So what happened was I was getting ready um, to read my Bible, and I was laying down at night, and um, I had my Bible open, and it just happened to be open to um, Romans 7, not for any reason. I, it was just open there. And I actually saw a finger, and it was a finger of an angel. I know it was a light that was shaped like a finger point down, and it pointed to this particular scripture that talks about um, the law bringing death that people, a lot of people will bring to me as a reason why you don't pay any attention to the law because it will just bring death to you. And so, when I, so I, obviously when I see a finger pointed to scripture and my gift, I have a gift as a seer, so that, this might be, be strange to you, but that's, that kind of thing kind of happens fairly regularly to me. Um, but when I, when I read this part of the scripture, I was really confused because it's hard to understand why um, God wanted us to follow his laws, yet right there it said the law brings death. And so I had a dream, and in this dream, um, I had this dream of something that would never happen, but I was getting dressed on one side, you know, in my bedroom, and um, I was putting on the, 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 the spiritual garment, is what the definition of that was, and then my husband, um, just came home tired and he handled the situation wrong with my son and accidentally killed my son and which again he'd never do but the, in in this dream that's that's what happened and then he he was really upset and anyway so um and all of a sudden of course i woke up and it's like oh my gosh what does that mean and then the verse was repeated to me the um the spirit brings life and the flesh brings death so when you try to do anything it has to be in the, done in the spirit and not in the flesh. So don't ever try to um, keep God's law without being in the spirit. There's a lot of people that try to do it, and it's, I could see why Paul said the things he said, because um, it brings about, there's a lot of legalism in that. Part of guiding the way God wants to guide the church, the way God wants to guide you, is to have you be spirit filled and read his word and do what the word says but don't eliminate the word do what the fullness of the word says um, and you can read you can understand more about that in the video about the remnant church I spent a little more time at it and also by going to my website and reading under the Ark of Safety Next one is after getting all these dreams, I'm desperate to find the perfect church. And so in this dream, I call it begging for the keys. Uh, me and my family were driving in a car and we're going around and we're looking for the perfect house. The house represents the church. And we just can't find it. And it was so frustrating for me. And um, once I thought I saw it, then the windows were broken and just looked kind of evil and spooky. And so I'm frustrated and then so I go inside a real estate place and I see seven women. Now the seven women, I'll just tell you, represent the seven churches from the book of Revelation. So, and they're older women. And so I'm, I'm begging them to get me a key to a, a certain house. And oh, by the way, in this dream I did see a house on the top of the hill that like, da-da, it was perfect. And it was... Um, where I wanted to go to church, but it was on top of a hill and you couldn't get up it. Again, that, that would represent the house of God. That's where God, that, that's his perfect place. And so I wanted to get to this house, but the women, they wouldn't listen to me. I was trying to explain how important it is, you know, but you have to give me the key. It's so important. Judgment is coming and they wouldn't they wouldn't uh, give it to me. And so how kind of things went on is I um, was trying to break in. And the dream what the dream told me is God is go is at his work. I shouldn't be trying to break in. You know, trying to get through there in the wrong way. And I think sometimes we lack the peace and we go about things our our own way.
So I've had a lot of dreams um, about a flood, uh, about how to avoid being in a flood um, that God is going to come and bring on the earth. And it really comes down to adultery, spiritual adultery. When we fornicate ourselves with other gods and you say, well, no, we don't do that. Well, we do when, when we follow the path of man's traditions, which is the path of Constantine, when we say on Passover week, we say Happy Easter, and it's um, and Easter is the name of a pagan goddess. Another name for Easter is Isis. You see what Isis is doing today? Another name for Isis is Easter. Um, I believe that that is where our problem um, is going to lie with, with this group. Um, we need to, which again brings in the persecution. Um, we see that happening right now in, in Iraq, of course, and, and Syria. And um, maybe by the time you watch this video, you'll see it in the United States. Um, I think that's uh, where we're at. To avoid this type of persecution, personally, we need to stop committing adultery. We need to stop following the ways um, of man and start following the ways of God. And I talk a lot about that in um, the Ark of Safety on my website. The last dream, the adulterous woman going over the cliff, there was a woman in a car and she was with her lover and they weren't married and they were um, in adultery and so the car was going to go over. All of a sudden God's hand caught the car and the woman, he took the woman and she washed her clothes and uh, although she wasn't perfect she was in the process of and that would be the warning and the guidance guidance for the church is we need to clean ourselves up we need to start following god's rules we need to read the entirety of the bible the full counsel of god and not just part of it we need to have god and all ten commandments in our hearts as the spirit leads it There are many, many, many dreams I've had over the years. Um, on my website, you can go there and you can see some of the ones that have come to pass already um, and some of the things that are happening, um, not just with the church, but as the nation, which will affect the church. Um, I, so I encourage you to go to my website under the section Dreams and Visions and watch some of the other videos.